Let's take a look at what's harder, more incapacitating, more draining, food deprivation or sleep deprivation. And we will do so by looking at physical and mental effects, short-term and long-term sleep and food deprivation. And then we'll finish off with some lessons learned. Food and sleep deprivation in occasional life situations is inconvenient, but tolerable. In habitual repetition is debilitating. In extreme circumstances like war or training is miserable and in absolute situations is deadly. Let's begin with the effects of food deprivation, starting with zero food. An article I got from the University of Texas reports that in cases of a famine or intentional starvation, or a self-sabotaging eating disorder, humans can safely handle up to a 10% weight loss. Beyond 10%, the body weakens and begins to adapt itself in various ways, to include a degree of inactivity and a natural shedding of more weight to maintain vital processes and to move a lighter body. Once 15 to 20% of normal body weight is lost, the victim is no longer capable of much weakness, depression, and apathy will also set in. A person who loses 33% of their body weight from a lack of eating will be so fragile that the slightest negative circumstance can push the person to death. Under more normal circumstances, in accordance with a person's metabolism and physical or mental output, each of us require a certain amount of calories each day. A hard-working person or athlete burns many more calories each day than a lazy person or someone with a slow metabolism. But since the majority of my viewers and subscribers are interested in this subject as it pertains to military and special operations training, let's assume a young and strong man who has a high metabolism and who does a lot of training and strenuous activity. Let's make him a soldier. Let's call him Luke. Luke weighs 170 pounds and is 12% body fat. That is 20 pounds of body fat. Luke needs to eat 2,500 calories a day if he does nothing at all but relax. But Luke is in ranger school doing intense military training. Let's say he burns an extra 1 to 200 calories an hour, 12 to 20 hours a day. We will generalize and say that Luke requires 4,500 calories to maintain his weight and to perform his required duties. The problem is that he only eats 3,000 calories a day. That means he has a 1,500 calorie deficit each day. We all know that a pound of body fat has approximately 3,500 calories. So with a 1,500 calorie deficit each day, Luke will lose around one pound of body fat every two and a half days or three pounds a week. Ranger school is now 61 days long. So in theory, that would mean losing 26 pounds. For sure, people have lost 26 pounds at Ranger school. I lost about 20, but this isn't an exact science since there are other factors, like blueberry pancakes in the mountain phase, a helicopter pilot feeling sorry for you and handing you a Snickers bar, or eating three double cheeseburgers during your eight hour break before going off to Dahlonega. Not to mention that there's a huge difference between burning fat for calories and burning muscle for calories. I'm not sure the science behind it, but at the final phase of ranger school, most of us didn't have any body fat left to burn. So we burnt muscle for calories, and this gave off a repugnant odor, kind of like ammonia. Moving on to sleep deprivation. I think we all know that the average person needs between seven and nine hours of sleep a night. Let's call it eight. This varies from person to person and throughout the lifetime of a person. Sleep is not like a bank in that you can withdraw from your account by only sleeping three to four hours and then make it up the next day by depositing or getting 10 hours of sleep. Academic articles about the effects of sleep deprivation report that insufficient sleep leads to slower response speed and a decrease in performance, alertness, attention, and vigilance. Decreased alertness and attention leads to a decreased cognitive ability. Sleep is critical to learning and memory, and when sleep is hindered, your memory is correspondingly degraded Sleep deprivation literature also reports attention loss, an increase in mistakes, and an increase in the time that it takes to do something. 
I've already made a detailed video about sleep deprivation during military training. I'll leave a link to it at the end of this video. On a subjective and less professional level, I also made a video where I reported that after a few days of sleep deprivation, you are, quote, functionally retarded. I think that about sums it up. But if you want kinder or more subjective wording than functional retard, perhaps we can say that it hinders your mental and physical performance. Now let's get back to Luke, our special operations soldier in training. If Luke's sleep is deprived for a day, he will have a decreased reaction time and a lack of focus. After a second day, his cognitive abilities and focus are severely disrupted. After a third day, he is making dangerous and stupid decisions. And after four days, he is a severe liability to his teammates. You guys know how I like to use a matrix or a chart. So in this case, check out my chart of performance as a function of food. In this chart, we have a week of healthy eating. In blue, you can see a person who eats 100% of his RDA or recommended daily allowance. And in orange, you can see performance. This person eats well and performs well. This is logical. Here is my eating schedule during a normal week. On Monday, I do intermittent fasting and have an afternoon snack and a small dinner. I only get 40% of my RDA, but my brain functions at 90%. Next, I eat my normal amount of calories on Tuesday and Wednesday and similarly function at 100%. Thursday and Saturday, I go on date night with my wife, so I usually eat a little bit more than I should. Yes. The point here is that with only one day of food deprivation, I still perform between 90 and 100% all week long. Now let's move on to two types of short-term food deprivation. Monday, Luke, our soldier eats well and performs well. Tuesday and Wednesday, he goes to the field and only brings one MRE each day. He gets only 66% of his required calories, but he performs well at 90%. Thursday, he eats all he wants and performs at 100%. And then Friday and Saturday, he doesn't eat anything at all. If Luke is like me, on Friday his performance will suffer and be at 80% because he will be craving sugar and caffeine. But on Saturday, his cravings will be less and he will be back to 90%. Please note that Luke's performance is always 80% or better and that it is mostly 90% or better. This is because short-term food deprivation makes you grumpy, but not dumb or incapacitated. Now we are back with Luke at Ranger School. As we said earlier, Luke needs 4,500 calories but only gets 3,000 calories. So he is working at 60% his requirement. If all things were otherwise equal, the first few days he would still be performing at 90%, then a few days at 85%, and a few days at 80%. When eating only two-thirds of his required calories, Luke would grow accustomed to it and perform at about 75% of his best for the remainder of his training. The key takeaway is that if you are deprived of a percentage of the calories that you need for a long time, you will live but be only 75% or average in your performance. But this chart just shows food deprivation. Let's jump to sleep deprivation. This is a similar chart of performance as a function of sleep. Sleep is measured in blue in hours and performance is measured in orange on a scale of 10, with 10 being the best and one being the worst. We see in this chart a disciplined person who gets eight hours of sleep each day and all things being equal, he performs at a 10 out of 10 all week long. Here's what it looks like for two weeks, and here it is for three weeks. Now let's look at a bad sleeper. On Monday, he only gets six hours of sleep. On Tuesday, he stays up until two in the morning watching Netflix and only gets five hours of sleep. His performance deteriorates to a nine out of 10. Wednesday, he plays video games with his buddies until one o'clock in the morning and gets six hours of sleep. This is more than the day before, but less than the 8 hours that he needs, so his performance degrades from a 9 to an 8 out of 10. Thursday, he can't sleep because he drank too many energy drinks and he performs at a 7 out of 10. And Friday, with only 6 hours of sleep, his performance drops to 60% of capacity. Like most of his friends, he stays up late again on Friday, but is able to get 10 hours of sleep. He recovers to a 7 out of 10, and on Sunday, he gets 12 hours of sleep in blue, allowing his body to recover another 10% 
to the point of functioning at 8 out of 10. Now let's look at this for a second week. By the end of another week of the same sleep pattern, he is functioning on the second Friday in orange at a 4 out of 10 and recovers on the weekend only to 60% capacity. Here is that exact same sleep pattern for a third week. We now see a pattern of performing at a 4 or a 5 out of 10 during the week. And then after sleeping in, Saturday and Sundays, he's only able to return to a 6 out of 10. This is exactly why there are millions and millions of stupid people out there. This is why business owners can't find good employees. This is why people make bad decisions and are unhappy. They sabotage their sleep and are functionally retarded. Do you think that an Olympic athlete stays up till 2 in the morning watching YouTube the night before a big race? The fact is, you can't perform at your best when you're sleep deprived. Now let's go back to our ranger student, Luke. Here we see in blue that he gets a few days of 4 hours of sleep and is functioning in orange at a 5 out of 10. Then he gets a few days in blue of 2 hours of sleep and his performance in orange drops even more. Over the long run, Luke is functioning at about 40 or 50% of his full mental and physical capability. So would I want to go on an actual combat mission with men operating at 50% capacity? Never. But this is a leadership school, not a tactic school. And the more important lesson is about building mental toughness and a never quit mindset. And so for this reason, they continue to use sleep deprivation to test and evaluate Ranger candidates. Let's imagine that Luke finishes all of his training and he makes it to Ranger Battalion. He is now deployed and averages seven hours of sleep a day. But every third day, he pulls an all-nighter and goes outside the wire that requires him to be alert and focused all night long. By the time he gets back to the base, he is performing in orange at a six. Thankfully, he can get back to his steady state of nine out of 10 before going on the next mission. By now, you guys know that I'm a chow hound, that I love good food. Few things give me more pleasure than sharing Mexican food with friends and family. A porterhouse and a glass of Amarone isn't bad either. But even with that said, I would rather go without food for days than miss out on my sleep for one. When I'm detoxing from sugar or caffeine, I might have a headache, but I'm still performing mentally and physically at about 100%. A day or two into a fast and I'm still performing mentally at 90% and physically at 80%. But if you take away my sleep for a day, my performance suffers. Take away my sleep for three days and I'm exhausted. Take away my sleep for a week and I'm retarded, dangerous. This video is about what's harder, more painful, more incapacitating, more draining. And the answer is sleep deprivation. It's not debatable. It isn't up for interpretation. Yes, there are very few exceptions, but in 99% of all humans, a few days of zero food and you are weak and tired, but after a few days of no sleep, you are critically impaired and dangerous. Thanks for watching. I hope you are now more capable of understanding the importance of nutrition and sleep and will take a more deliberate approach to maintaining your health and maximizing your performance. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to join my Life as a Special Operations team and to forward this video to a friend who needs to see it. Life is a special operation. Are you ready for it?